Le Parfum, a forgotten flanker of the La Nuit family here. Um, really is a fragrance that never really got full traction as far as a hype train goes. So today in 2017, I'm going to let you guys know what I think of this forgotten flanker of the La Nuit family. Let's go. Hey YouTube Fragrance family, welcome to another Robes 08 Fragrance Review. I'm happy that you're tuning in. Today is on the house of YSL, Yves Saint Laurent, and the scent, a flanker of the original La Nuit de l'Homme. Now this thing has been hyped up to the max when it first got released. Still getting lots of love in the community. Lots of talk in regards to reformulation. People love it, hate it. Wouldn't you love to get your hands on my original four digit Batch code, La Nuit de l'Homme, uh-uh-uh, no touchy-touchy. <laughs> but we're talking about one of the flankers. I got three here, but we're going to talk about the little guy right here. This one called La Nuit de l'Homme Le Parfum. Basically, everybody's talking about the intense version. What about Le Parfum, a highly ver forgotten uh, flanker from the House of YSL? So I can't wait to let you guys know what I think about this fragrance. Let's go. La Nuit de l'Homme Le Parfum hit the shelves in 2010. Bottle sizes are the smaller one, which you see here is the two ounce bottle, and then the standard, the 3.4 ounce bottle. Concentration is Eau de Parfum. Flankers, this is actually a flanker of La Nuit de l'Homme, and among many others that you see here. And in 2017, there is going to be a new flanker to the family, which is called Eau Electrique. Pricing, um, give or take, Le Parfum can vary from $70 to $90 online. Um, that is American pricing. However, if you do go to a discounter, you can have it for a little cheaper. Um, I've, I've seen it varying from, you know, from a $60 to $50 for uh, the bottle size that I have here. Now looking at presentation, the bottle in the box um, doesn't vary much from the original La Nuit de l'Homme. So let's take a look at the box first. And as you can see, it's just your standard uh, box for La Nuit de l'Homme. And the only real difference here is it says Le Parfum uh, right here at the bottom. Um, you got the YSL up top right here. I'm looking at the back here, you have some information. And then at the bottom, you got your barcode with your obviously your batch code. Now focusing more on the bottle itself, uh, as you can see here, La Nuit de l'Homme, uh, YSL, Le Parfum, uh, you got the standard YSL black cap, and uh, you actually have a sticker at the bottom. Uh, my cap is a uh, full like this, so it does have some weight to it actually, very, very nice. And the atomizers, the uh, beautiful silver atomizers, you take a look at uh, the spray, is actually fairly decent as an atomizer. Now let's delve into the notes, let's take a look at them. In the introduction, um, this thing is uh, dark right off the bat. Um, there's bergamot in this introduction, I hardly smell it. Anise and black pepper. Um, you get a lot of that pepper and anise and those two notes mesh very well together. I'm gonna get back to that more into the review. In the mid, we got the familiar lavender from the original La Nuit de l'Homme. Um, it was a major player in the original La Nuit and it is going to be a player in this one too. Uh, the major, major player in this fragrance is the labdanum. Um, it really does pull everything together. And then there's Fruity notes. I love when fragrance brands are so, they, uh, they just give you a, a, a beautiful breakdown like fruity notes, woody notes, uh, spices. I love when they say that because it's complete BS. <laughs> fruity notes. The fruity notes kind of smell like a, um, like my mom used to say when I was a young boy, une compote de pomme. Uh, kind of like a, um, what can I say? Uh, not compote de pomme because that's a, a, an apple applesauce. It's like an applesauce, but like a strawberry applesauce, um, like a raspberry applesauce, kind of something like that. That is the uh, fruity note. It's a compote. <laughs> In the base, we got some patchouli, some vetiver, and some vanilla. So you're going to get that familiar um, sweetness in this fragrance that you had in uh, La Nuit. Major notes to my nose, mostly pepper. It hits me right away in the opening. Those fruity notes, la compote, and labdanum, which is basically the whole thing that ties everything together. Vanilla, of course, the sweet notes. Um, you are going to get some vetiver, lavender is huge too, and the anise also, uh, but those are your major notes to my nose. Group, this is an oriental fougère. How many sprays and where? Let's go application. 
So my application for Le Parfum is actually very simple. Um, it's a three spray process. One on the chest, no shirt, bare chested, yeah baby. And then two on the neck. Boom, boom, I'm ready to go. That was a half spray, I didn't like that. Um, oh, oh I, I, I like this one. I think this one's actually kind of underrated. A lot of people talk about projection longevity just because it's an EDP and they hate on it just because of that. That's no reason to hate on a fragrance. Well, it depends. It, it's your, your call. Um, but for me, that is no reason to hate on a fragrance. So before we go anywhere on this one, I wanted to say this is not a Pat Fern EDP version of the original. Um, so that is just something I just wanted to clear the air. Um, the scents do share some similarities here. However, they're rather minimal. Um, if you blindfolded me and you said, is this a La Nuit de l'Homme flanker? Ah, that's probably uh, too much too much information for me that I would probably say yes, because why are you asking me that? Um, but really, it just takes a little bit. It's very minimal from the original. Now, the opening of La Nuit de l'Homme, Le Parfum, immediately made me think of a mature set. It made me think warm and rich. Now let's surgically open up this fragrance and I'm gonna let you guys know what the notes do, how major, how minor are they. So let's get into it. Introduction of this fragrance. Even though it's not the first note out of the gate, this nose right here picks up pepper. I picked up pepper, I remember doing an initial thought on my on my channel when I first bought this like years ago. Like, go back like six years uh, when I first opened this up. Um, yeah, it's been that long. Uh, <laughs> um, I said pepper, pepper, and pepper. It attacks my nose. Now, this is not a pepper-based fragrance. It's not like a Marc Jacobs Bang, which tons of pepper, black pepper, and it's just too much. Um, it really has blended very well into the fragrance. Yeah, I can notice that there's black pepper in here and it really does attack my nose, but really it's a a whole part of the theme of this fragrance. So the pepper hits my nose immediately. It gives Le Parfum a strong spicy kick off the bat and I actually really, really like that. This pepper is well done in my opinion. It takes time to kind of get used to because it is kind of strong in the opening, especially people that their noses gravitate to pepper quite a bit. Um, it might be something that is just too much for you. For me, um, the more I wore this, the more I got used to it, the more I started loving this opening. Now I'm just, I, I love this opening. Now this opening is also paired with that dark anise note, black licorice. Um, that black licorice and the pepper, oh, it works so, so well. Uh, these two notes, um, I felt in this fragrance, those two notes, the black pepper and the anise in this opening, were the match made in heaven. Um, they really just meshed so well together. These two are the one-two punch in this opening that just really made it work. Um, the anise in here is not too strong. Um, however, it gives this scent that air of mystery, that darkness uh, in the opening. It just continues to go darker um, the more you, you wear it, but the introduction is dark just because of the anise note. Now, think of Au Masculé by Lolita Limpica. Um, has that Denise note um, is super prominent in that fragrance. Not as prominent in this, but it really does have a lot of depth to it. The pepper's coming out and so is the anise. So that's your introduction and it introduces you to a spicy element to uh, Le Parfum. Now the fruity notes are here too. The fruity notes are pretty much a darkened fruit just because of that anise and that pepper that comes through. The fruit really doesn't come off as um, uplifting or anything like that. No, it's more like, like I said, a compote au pomme, but without the pum. Um, it really isn't um, an apple sauce like but without the apple. Um, it, it doesn't have a prominent apple note in here. No, no, don't think that. It just, I'm just thinking a sauce, a, a compote, um, which has uh, raspberry and uh, strawberry. I, I really couldn't pinpoint the berry, but there's some berry in here. <laughs> um, just think about fruits, dark fruits smashed up in a compote. Um, to note, I get barely any bergamot in this scent. I know I said it earlier, but I just wanted to note again that there's no real citrus in here. Um, now the lavender, the lavender in this fragrance uh, steals a page from the original La Nuit. Yeah, um, it is uh, fairly prominent in the original La Nuit, and it does steal a page of it. It is one of the uh, more prominent notes that both these fragrances actually share. That's pretty much it. The lavender are really hand in hand, the same kind of use in both fragrances. Um, the lavender just gives this scent, that out of dryer kind of lavender. 
uh, in the opening right up to the mid. Um, it is a great addition to this scent. I think it would have went way too dark without the lavender, without that fruity scent. Uh, the lavender also, to note, helps the scent not to be too dark and keeps things on an even keel with those darker scents, um, those darker notes that will be coming through the fragrance. So right now, what I'm smelling in the opening, coming into the mid, is the pepper, um, the uh, fruity notes, which is more of a compote. Uh, <laughs> I love saying that word. Um, lavender, um, you got your anise and your pepper. And now let's move on to the big boy in this fragrance. Now, what is the major note in La Nuit Le Parfum? It is the labdanum, yes. Now moving on to that man. Now the labanum, the man in this fragrance, the man, the big boy note in this fragrance, it is there in the introduction right down to the baseline of this fragrance. Yes, the labanum is the central theme, in my personal opinion, of Le Parfum. It shows itself in the opening. What does it give me in the opening? It kind of gives this fragrance a pine-like scent. Um, not too woody, but it does have a pine-like scent. And with the fruity notes in here, what does it remind people of? A Christmas tree, Burberry London. Yes, that's what it makes you think of. That's why it gets compared to Burberry London sometimes because of that labdanum. It has a pine Christmas tree-like feel with a peu de compote là-dedans. Um, <laughs> labdanum, which gives this scent its richness, then once it dries down more into the mid of the scent, it kind of wafts. I don't think that's a word. Wafts. <laughs> It wafts in a strong sweetness, almost resin-like, but not particularly too sticky. Um, a leathery, peppery kind of smell. That's what the labdanum kind of gives you. Um, so it has that leathery backbone to this fragrance because of the labdanum. Um, this paired with the vanilla gives Le Parfum a little bit of sweetness, yes, in this dry down with some earthy vetiver and patchouli, which darkens the scent even more. Um, a great ending to a very solid scent. So the vetiver, two note, vetiver and patchouli, not very green, more earthy. Um, it doesn't throw out, uh, I know vetiver and patchouli sometimes kind of give you um, that, that kind of weird feeling, that greenness. Um, it really isn't overall green here. It's more black, it's dark, labdanum. Um, really is the major factor in this dry down. Um, excellent scent throughout. Now overall, comparing Le Parfum with its older brother La Nuit, the best seller in the game, I can uh, fully say that Le Parfum is a more mature scent than the original La Nuit. It still has that playfulness that you get from La Nuit. La Nuit is a fun fragrance. Um, it's a younger fragrance than this. Um, some people feel like the original La Nuit is geared toward feminine. I kind of disagree with that. Don't worry about that. But um, because of the labdanum in here, the patchouli, the vetiver, the anise note, um, it really has more of a mature vibe, a more manly vibe to this fragrance. This gets tons of negative feedback because people think an EDP should outperform an EDT. And they immediately knock this fragrance saying, it's not worth the money. This is a shitty fragrance from YSL. Why couldn't they just do an EDP version of this? Kind of get out of that mind frame. Think of this as its own standalone release. Is it good? I think so. Uh, you can tell it is influenced by the original, but different enough to stand on its own. And that's the way I like to review. I like to review it on its own. It's definitely darker. It's spicier than the original Lenry. However, it gives you a little of the original during its wearing. Um, so it still has that comfort feeling. Oh, this is a Lenry flanker. Yes, but it can stand on its own. Overall, a very, very solid flanker from the line and I really don't understand the hate this gets. Now, I'm not trying to defend it. Hey, we all have our own noses and we love the things that we love and we hate the things that we hate. You know, I, I totally agree with where people can, can hate this fragrance and they can hate the original and me also. Um, so I totally understand. Um, however, I feel like this deserves a lot more love in the community. So now let's go into recommended age. What do I think the age range is for this fragrance? Really, it's built for anybody. If I really want to be specific, for someone 25 and on, or, or older, sorry. 
25 and older just because it has a little bit of a more mature vibe but it still has that playfulness i could see somebody in college wearing this just getting out of college and um i really think that this one would be great for really anybody but if i had to put an age on it 25 and over reminds people of what which fragrance burberry london i just felt like that labdanum um, when it kind of gave off the, gave off that pine like smell to the fragrance with that that beautiful compote it, it kind of reminds people of Burberry London. I've seen it before, and that's the reason why. Um, it does remind people of the original Lend Me. Sometimes, yeah, it takes it pulls a little bit from the original. Best time to wear this fragrance. It is a nighttime fragrance. Most of the La Nuit flankers are made for nighttime. That's what they're there for. They're made for uh, close encounters. Mainly this one is great for close encounters. So what do I mean by close encounters? Well, if you are just staying in with your girlfriend or a girl that you like or your wife or things like that, this is one to just spray on and get don't get physical well you can get physical if you want probably is going to end that way but <laughs> it's just getting close to someone yeah um seasons this is mostly geared for fall as you can see from my uh i think i put in like 40 percent of the time i would wear this for fall winter it doesn't have the oomph for these canadian winters that much so i don't wear it that much but it would be great for a lighter winter uh spring nights and summer nights also so that's why it has a little bit of a score in both of those um, I love wearing this, you know, spring and summer nights. Perfect for that. Development. Is this linear, average, or complex? I would say more average. Gearing almost close to linear. It really doesn't have much movement to this fragrance. It almost has only really two stages. Once that labdanum, those opening notes, the pepper kind of scratches off a little bit. Um, and the anise, then the labdanum kind of takes over. And it's really a two-sided affair here. Work appropriate. I want to say, you know, the initial impression is, no, it's not work appropriate. I say yes. I've worn this at work. Lack of projection actually kind of helps this fragrance to wear at work. Um, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback with this fragrance. It's not one of those that is going to get a lot of feedback at work, which is a good thing because either it's going to be really high good feedback or really high crappy feedback and the, the kind of fragrance this is built upon um, really at work three sprays of this stuff you're good for the day um, and it's not going to push too much that people are going to be like who's the stinker in the office <laughs> uh signature set worthy again for work appropriate i just want to tell you this is more built for nighttime signature set worthy it could be um, if you live in Canada like I do, I could see myself if, you know, I didn't have this kind of collection, um, I could wear this, you know, 60 to 70 percent of the time. I could wear this, you know, fall all the time. I could signature scent this sucker all the time. Winter, same thing. Spring, that's when it's going to have to kind of go. Once it starts getting hot, it's time to go. <laughs> Let's get to the rating system. Mm, bring it up. Here we go. <laughs> Projection. Four bottles out of ten. Ooh, that hurts. <laughs> it's a mid to soft as far as projection goes. This thing doesn't push too much. And that's where people are going, oh, it's a DDP. <laughs> Why? Um, no, it doesn't push much. But you know what? Use your noggin and think, okay, where can I wear this kind of fragrance? Um, you know what? I can wear this on dates, things like that. You know, if I'm getting close to someone, that's when I'm going to wear it. I'm going to wear it at the mall. I'm going to wear it at work. Things like that. Think. Think what you can use it for. Longevity, seven bottles out of 10. Really good score. I know some people will say, hey, projection sucks, longevity sucks, this fragrance just sucks. No, it has longevity. On my skin, hey, in these Canadian winters, you've gotta have some longevity. And it kinda works. It's better for fall. I get six to nine hours with that. Um, this fragrance really did very, very well. Yeah, sometimes it goes five hours and it's like, oh, that sucks, five hours, boo, boo, boo. But sometimes it goes, like pushes eight to nine hours. So longevity, seven bottles out of 10. Common factor, another seven. Um, really interesting. I, I really didn't think um, this was going to get that many compliments. Not, I'm not, I'm not BSing you and saying I got 100 compliments with this fragrance. Hey, I don't wear it that much. Uh, and, however, I ask. I ask people and I ask them, what do they think about this fragrance? Did I get a couple people come up to me? Yeah, that's why I was talking about work. Some people came up to me and they're like, that one works for you, buddy. That one works. So those kind of compliments bring up that compliment factor. So seven bottles out of 10. Uniqueness, is this unique? 
Yes, seven bottles out of 10. I love the work with the anise and the pepper in the opening. Nothing does it like that. The opening's absolutely gorgeous. That fruity note, that compote with a little bit of strawberry, apple and strawberry and some raspberry and you do a little squish squish and it looks like uh, applesauce. Yeah, that kind of feeling, beautiful. Labdarum is a beast in this fragrance. Well done too. So uniqueness, seven. Pricing versus what you get. You know what? This is a solid flanker. You know, I, there's so many that just slap on a YSL logo on it and you're good to go and they charge you 80, 90 bucks. I got to think how many fragrances like that are worthless. This one is actually worth it. I think it's worth it. I, I'm going to give it a seven bottles out of 10. I really think it's not obviously bang it out of the park type of pricing, but it really is good at seven. Versatility, I'm going to give it another seven. Fairly high for this kind of fragrance just because it doesn't have too much push. So I can wear it during the spring and summer and it's got, not going to engulf people. Um, a, if it gets a little warm and I wore it, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have worn this. Hey, you know what? I'm not too worried because it doesn't really push that much. Uh, smell, eight bottles out of 10. Very, very solid as far as the smell goes. And that goes to an overall score for La Nuit de l'Homme, Le Parfum. I'm going to give this one an eight very very good uh score um i actually think this could be a high eight on my score um really a solid flanker something that was actually kind of forgotten in the la nuit uh program so if you know if you're in the market and you've smelt let's say the original la nuit and you love it and you've you know tried the lady towns the new one and you love that and nobody really has tried frozen cologne <laughs> um this one may be up your alley go check it out um it, it does have a little more of a mature vibe and that goes to buy try or pass um let's get rid of the one that nobody likes uh buy try or pass this is a try um it really is there's so many so much negative on this fragrance that you do just have to sample it you have to check it out and see if it's up up your alley especially if you think mark's got a point you know i really like the anise in loletti limpica i really like ladronum as a, a, a note um these are the kind of telltale signs that go hmm maybe i should try this you know i've heard a lot of bad things but i'm gonna uh, try it out um i'm not hiding anything you know the projection's bad on this one but uh you make it work so overall it's not a knock it out of the park type of flanker. You know, it doesn't beat the original. I love the original Enemy that I'm, It is an outstanding fragrance. However, some people prefer this one over the original, and I can see why. And some people hate this one and love the original, and I can see why. Personally, great addition to the lineup. I really felt like it was a solid, really solid flanker that's not getting its just due. So... Thank you for watching guys. As usual, I love to hear your comments. What do you think about this fragrance? Good, bad, the ugly, bring it down in the comments. I want to hear it. And as usual, thank you so much for the support. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. Have a good one.